Well, that was a little bit quick. Hello, everybody. My name is Andreas Günther. I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician from Gießen, Germany. I'm director of the Center for Distinction and Rare Lung Disease at our university hospital and also medical chair of a specialized lung clinic. Also, I have the privilege to work in the German Center for Lung Research, and I'm coordinating the European IPS registry. So my talk as uh, seen through the title of this uh, webinar, we'll have a view back uh, part and, uh, and a look into the future part. So the view back part is focusing on the European IPF registry and the look into the future will be on the so-called European IOD registry. I would like to briefly mention my disclosures. I've been serving at advisor for a number of pharmaceutical companies, but I'm completely free in my thinking with regard to the content of this talk. So the European IPS registry is a European registry alongside with the Biobank for Patients with Idiopathic Pulmonary Fibrosis. Uh, the, the, the countries in blue are those who are uh, participating in this uh, consortium. And um, this uh, structure has been originally founded by the European IPS Network, which is a translational research network funded by the European uh, Commune and has been um, created, uh, implemented, oops, I'm sorry, cannot get this lower part here. That is not too bad. Animation doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the European IPS network had been uh, uh, founded by, um, or has had been uh, um, implementing the European IPF registry which opened in 2009. We have meanwhile more than 2,500 patients and more than 8,000 biomaterials in the box. The focus clearly was on IPF, but we also allowed from the beginning on to also include other forms of IRDs. Um, there's a longitudinal data collection implemented with uh, regard to natural cause risk factors um, and also to decipher treatment responses, we have more than 3,500 parameters. So we can indeed talk about kind of a deep phenotyping of the patients. And of course, as mentioned, we are collecting biomaterials, but most important, uh, lung um, tissue samples obtained from patients undergoing transplants. And I would like to sh briefly share with you some of the data that we have been able to generate by use of this registry. Um, for example, one uh, publication was focusing on the survival of patients in our registry and dependency of uh, an antifibrotic treatment modality as we had uh, patients started to get into the registry by 2009. We did have a, a considerable number of patients not receiving antifibrotic therapy and you can see from this uh, publication that indeed we could somehow replicate for real world scenario the beneficial effect of uh, um, either OFAF or aspirate therapy on patients with IPF. Um, another example was published uh, in uh, CHEST, as you can see here. This was an uh, analysis of the uh, how density, density gram of patients with IPF. We had been hand segmenting. CT uh, scans from these patients and found out that the uh, uh, area right of the infection point of this density to gram curve uh, indicated an area which is highly prognostic in patients with IPF. In fact, next to the sex was one of the two indicators of outcome in the multivariate survival analysis. Um, Another example um, was related to patient-related outcome parameters, such as the SF36 questionnaire. In this work, we could show that SF36 um, can be linked to anchor values such as lung function and six-minute walk, and is uh, a reliable um, test that can be applied to IPF subjects. And the final example um, is uh, from this paper, which has been published in Journal of Clinical Medicine, where we have been asking for the impact of prefinidone on lung uh, function and exercise data. And just one slide out of this paper shows the, the change in the uh, pooled FEC data set from the entire cohort uh, prior to uh, therapy and then uh, thereafter. And we also did some, some intra-individual analysis of slopes in order to reproduce this. Just 
just to let you know, I, we, we do believe that uh, one of the key um, advantages of our registry and is the, is the biobank part. Uh, I will have no time to go through details, but this is just a short selection of papers that all have been generated on the basis of biomaterials that originated from the registry biobank. Um, so we feel um, that uh, the provision of these kind of uh, biomaterials is a very ultimate, very important uh, part of our work, and um, this will be continued, of course. So look in the future. Um, so the look in the future uh, means that we are going to uh, enlarge our registry structure from the IPF focus registry and biobank. And uh -huh, this doesn't work either to an IOD register and biobank. Um, this will cover all important classes of pediatric and adult forms of IOD. We plan to recruit around 4,000 patients in the next three years. Um, the registry is linked on a, on a um, data warehouse level to the to the European pediatric IOD registry called Child EU. Um, and uh, this coming alongside with a grant proposal that had been uh, accepted for funding by the European Joint Program on Rare Diseases, AGPRD. And this consumption is called Rare ILD. And, and what we intend to do is shown on this particular slide, and I hope that the pointer is going to work. I have to pick him up here. So patients with any kind of diagnosis of IOD being with either adult or pediatric patients will undergo deep phenotyping by use of a number of different um, modules. So there will be a lung function module, an echo module, a gas exchange module, patient history, diagnosis, et cetera, et cetera. We will also, of course, collect HRCTs and pathological slides if possible. And we also aim to conduct 10 tiles spirometry, uh, saturation, and that's not true, accelerometry. We're going to do an exercise test, the one minute sit to stand test. We'll do this uh, on a number of multiple follow up um, time points up to three years. And at the same time, we will collect um, all kinds of biospecimen, tissue, blood, urine, um, and also exhale breath. Uh, samples and except breath condensates, and we aim to do a genomic uh, and epigenomic uh, characterization. We will have a closer look at except breath condensates, looking for the protein, the transcriptome, and we were going to assess the volatilome uh, using an electric uh, uh, nose called the sniff phone. And all of these data are going to be poured into an IOD data warehouse. Uh, which I ultimately will aim to identify um, subgroup specific signatures, but also subgroup overspanning signatures, for example, indicating a given phenotype, such as the progressive hypotic phenotype. We have heard of this before. The sites that are going to um, um, contribute to this endeavor uh, are the ones listed here. I don't have the time to go all of these. But these are some of the most uh, respected uh, uh, ILD sites in, throughout Europe, uh, as you will notice. Yeah. And finally, I would like to show you a nice and kind of more detailed cartoon. So what what you heard is to we aim to get the phenome at, at the site, the phenome at home, the comorbididome. We we'll also get the pharmaceutical treatment uh, detailed on the WHO WHO catalog. Uh, assess the image genome on the basis of HRCTs that we're going to collect, uh, and then to do some translational work, as mentioned, EBC protein transcriptome, the volatilome, and the genome and uh, epigenome. It, it, we, are, okay. we would like to conduct metabolomic, lipidomic, microbomic, and viromic studies, but this is yet not um, uh, reality because we are missing or lacking still the funding for this particular endeavor. And for home spirometry, we have been choosing to use this combo consisting of the Patient Empower app, which we felt uh, comparing it to a number of other uh, uh, providers is, is, is very um, informative and, and this can easily be used by the patient, which is linked by via Bluetooth to a mere spirometer and uh, um, oximeter and the problems we are are going to obtain at home is spirometry, saturation, of course, 
one minute sit stand test uh, uh, QL questionnaires to be uh, filled out uh, in a quarter manner, and then some data with regard to symptom load questions that the patient will need to answer, and also signs of respiratory infection, and this can also be linked to air quality. And um, overall, we are going to sample 1,000 patient ears using this technology, so I hope for that uh, at the end of the day, we can make some kind of safe, safe um, uh, statements with regard to the usability of these devices and also probably provide some kind of uh, algorithms to intra-individually detect deterioration uh, by use of a mathematical model. Uh, and with this, I think I'm done. Again, thanks for my collaborators. You can see, the, again, the names of the participating clinical sites and the sites that participate in the Rare ID consortium. And thank you for your audience.